Well, welcome back. Got the engine out onto my bench here, and we're going to start uh, disassembling it and uh, going through some of the things we're going to slightly modify or, or replace or improve. What we're going to do here, and it's a little trick that I've uh, picked up over the years, is I'm going to just polish up and clean up the, wary, the surfaces where the uh, uh, fiber plates run and uh, shine them up, re make them real shiny and smooth, and that way the plates won't catch. When you release the clutch and one plate, uh, when the plates can't move a little bit to, to release their friction to allow you to change gears or stop at a stoplight or when you're first starting out, when you click it into first gear and you hear that clunk, well that means one of the plates is, is stuck or there's a little bit of friction here and the transmission's still spinning a little bit even though you're stationary and there's some drag in here. And Well, I want to try to eliminate that. And, but you can only do this if the fingers are like this one where they're uh, really clean and not really worn. If it's bad, if they're already, if you can feel some ridges in there, you, you can't do this. You, you're going to have to uh, replace it. Because while you could file down those ridges or grind down those rivet ridges, you're going to open up the space between each one of these fingers here, which is what, which is going to cause a lot of clutch noise and that's going to be the plates are, are going like this in between here and clanking back and forth. A lot of older bikes had a lot of clearance and that was a common complaint back in the 60s is while you're sitting there idling you'd hear kind of a clink 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 and all that was was the plates going back and forth. They, back in the day when manufacturing tolerances weren't as stringent they put a lot of clearance in there so when you release the clutch it actually released and not lurched forward when you put it into gear and that causes stress on the transmission and everything. So that's one of the things we're going to do here with this to kind of improve, improve clutch action on this bike. Moving on with our engine here, the next thing all we got to do is take off the rotary valve cover. Now I've removed all the bolts and it's just held on with those bolts and slides off. We're also going to replace this seal. It looks in real good shape but it's still available uh, and it's easy to replace so we're gonna take that off and now you can see really the part of this engine that that makes this engine unique and and makes it um, work and uh, have so much low-end power at low rpms for a two-stroke and I'm gonna spin it around here the as you can see as the uh, crankshaft moves the disc moves and opens and closes the intake port here and uh, what we're going to do, and this just uh, slides off. It is uh, keyed onto the crankshaft by a dowel pin here. You can also see the crank bearing back there. Uh, and what we're going to do here, and is uh, there's some specifications. We're going to trim the, these two edges of the uh, rotary valve disc to increase the in intake duration. It's also going to open the intake port a little sooner and close it a little later to allow more fuel and more air into the engine over uh, a longer period of time which is going to increase performance and increase a little bit of top end uh, power. Also you can see here, here's our intake uh, port. There's also a channel down here that goes down behind. It's kind of allow uh, because this is an open bearing, uh, it's pressurized behind here. This allows, uh, you know, lubricating oil and such from the air fuel mix to get down in here into that bearing and everything. But also what we're going to do is we're also going to match these, these two openings. And uh, I'm going to show you in just a second here what I mean by that. But right in here, I'll do a close-up. There's some casting um, when they cast this. That there's a kind of a ridge right here. We're going to just kind of clean those up, and then we're going to uh, match it to these because when I stick this on here, I can uh, I can feel um, from the when I stick my finger in there, I can feel a slight ridge in there, which is going to create turbulence while the engine is running and uh, compromise a little bit of uh, power. As you can see right here, there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a lip, and uh, it doesn't look like much, 
And when you got the intake uh, gases and air flowing through there, this creates a lot of turbulence. It can create a little bit of pooling right here of the air fuel intake mixture. And uh, we're just going to uh, take off a little bit and this also this ridge here can create a little bit of tur turbulence. We're going to just take this down a little bit to make these match, smooth this across, and then also this part right here, um, this little transition, we're just going to smooth it up a little bit here and then also way inside there there's also where they uh, where they made this bore here they made a little bit of a lip and there's some turbulence here so there's actually two steps that the air has to um, step off of that can create tur turbulence and pooling of the fuel we're not looking to actually open this up and make it bigger we're just looking to match this to uh, the casing right here and we don't want to necessarily polish it up we want to leave it rough because that helps with fuel atomization we just want the smoothest possible flow we can get in in the each of these transitions okay now that you know kind of what we're going to do here uh, let's talk about the tools we're going to use to do this um, probably the tool that most people are going to have around is is some type of a rotary tool like this also known as a dremel tool uh, they take uh, small stones such as this or or this and they can even have uh, take uh, small little uh, like diamond uh, tipped uh, stones and carbide stones, uh, rotary files, all different kinds of things. Uh, we're going to use some of these uh, small ones that, that are real super fine abrasive for, uh, they're almost used exclusively for like polishing. We're going to use those to polish these edges here on our clutch basket like I talked about earlier. Kind of a big one, but we're probably going to just kind of finish up, just take off any uh, any burrs or something with a uh, with a uh, medium cross buff. We're not going to really polish with this. But we just want to take off, uh, kind of deburr after we get done finishing. And you know, if you don't have a Dremel tool, but you do have a uh, die grinder, either right angle or straight, you know, either kind is going to probably work in this operation. You know, you can use uh, grinding stones and things and, and rotary files on this too. Just, um, you know, even even a common uh, household uh, electric drill can uh, work for this operation. It might be slower and not as, um, not as fine. You won't have the control as you would with a tool like this or even your die grinder. So, but it can be done. Now you're probably asking, how in the world are we going to mark for um, where we need to cut this? Because as you saw in that last shot, we, we need to cut this down a little bit and how, how are we going to know when it's in there we can't probably get our tool in through each one of these ways very easily. Well, little trick that I've uh, picked up is uh, this happens to be just some scratch fix that I have but it doesn't matter what color it is I just chose white because it's going to show up easy. Uh, it's got a, got a brush on here. All you're going to do is you're going to brush a little paint on the outside of this uh, area here, well on the outside, because you can take it off later, so don't worry about being sloppy. And then uh, let it dry, of course, and then stick it on on there. And then from the opposite side, uh, take a, uh, a very sharp awl with a very sharp point on it, and in through your port there, you're gonna, from the other side, you're going to be scratching right around the edge and you're going to make a line and you're going to scratch the paint off there and so when you take it off you're going to have a nice scratch line that you can run your little grinding tool from this side instead of having to come through here you can grind until you get to your scratch line and you can keep putting it on back on and off and uh, checking with your finger to see if you're gone uh, far enough uh, if you've gone too far then you're going to have to kind of finish this a little bit now on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the finishing in here just a bit because there is a step place there. Then I will do this cover and match them that way.
that's what we're going to do uh, to kind of improve some performance here. We're going to do the same thing on the cylinder with the uh, exhaust uh, manifold where the pipe bolts up. It doesn't match exactly. And of course on the exhaust we're going we're gonna to polish it all up. We're also going to uh, raise the exhaust port just a little bit using some of the same techniques here. And I'll show, probably show you that later. But uh, that's about it for this time. So I'm going to get to it. And next time we're going to move on to doing the cylinder.